Let's try and understand how the integration by Monte Carlo methods of cosine squared x dx actually works. Uh, it's probably quite nice to illustrate it in Mathematica because it, I can do it much shorter and much more simply, and it has quite a few cute things built into it. Uh, undoubtedly, similar things are available in Python and MATLAB. I mean, I'm just quicker at doing these things over here. So the first thing we do is we just define a function that integrates the cosine squared x for n random real numbers between 0 and 1. Uh, and then we apply cos squared onto the list of random reals and we, in the end we add them all together, what's the plus add add does, and then we divide it by n. So this is just a very, very succinct way of doing the calculation. If you don't want to understand that, that's perfectly fine, as long as you understand that if I call integrate with an argument, something it essentially integrates by using that many random points so it is quite nice to try and understand how this works and what the random elements are by repeating this multiple number of times which is probably not what you would normally do you normally do it once and then compare it for, for one thing but here we do it a, what we really do is essentially we repeat the integration a hundred times so that's a hundred sets of random numbers so actually in the total we use 10 to the fifth times and essentially but each of those will give a distribution and then we make a histogram of the result now that of course takes a little while but not that long and what you can see happening if you look at that essentially and you make a binary histogram there then there's a, you see the standard type gaussian distribution starting to appear we would have expected uh, you can also do that with slightly more points so it takes slightly longer but still not that much longer and you see that it's not always as nice as you think it is sometimes a little bit skewed but essentially it's still quite neat and essentially you see happening over here there's still something that is probably not that poorly fit with a gaussian distribution um, a really nice thing is actually try to convince yourself that this distribution actually narrows as the number goes down. So what I now do is I'm going to make a table where this integrates this whole shebang for a, a reasonable number of points. And then essentially uh, it will just make that table for, well, let's take a little, be a little while. So it's going to take 100 points for 10 to a million integrals each. So essentially the, the largest number amount of work it, it needs to do is 100 times a million, which is still 100 million, so that's going to take a little while. But the really nice result that Mathematica can do is actually plot a distribution chart, but, which is essentially shows a little bit how this thing is distributed, uh, where it's widest is it's widest and where it's narrower is narrower. But what you see happening over there is that clearly with 100 points it's not going to be an absolutely elegant distribution, but essentially it starts looking like a Gaussian distribution. But the width of that distribution, if you mouse over it, you can clearly see essentially that it narrows considerably and essentially converges quite quickly to this narrow value. That's sometimes called a funnel plot, essentially showing, you, showing that if you get more data points, and essentially the values go down as well. So essentially that might be a nice thing to do. So essentially, if you really want to do very well with a, an integral of this type, you need to do a lot of points. And essentially with a lot of points, it actually would work quite well.